Hello everyone! Today we'll be talking about another very well-known mythical creature once again originating from Greek mythology. Known for their endless love of wine, food, and especially women, satyrs are very common in Greek myths and are included in several stories from classical mythology. Today I'll be talking about their origins, their place in Greek mythology, and of course, their impact on our pop culture. Satyrs were usually perceived as the rural fertility spirits of nature in ancient Greek folklore. They're described as having the body of a man from the waist up and the lower body of a goat. Although their upper body is human, they did have some differences that separated them from common human beings. Their arms and chest were usually very hairy, they had pointy ears and of course two goat horns coming out from their forehead. But the one distinctive feature about them is their almost constant erect member. In mythology, satyrs were often portrayed as the companions of the god of wine, Dionysus. Just like the god they served, these creatures loved to drink copious amounts of wine, dancing, playing instruments, not to be flutes and tambourines, and of course chasing beautiful nymphs around. Their lust and hot-blooded personality made them very volatile, and they could turn out to be dangerous and destructive at any given moment. Indeed, one common thing among satyrs is that they rarely knew how to control themselves when they were in that frenzied state, which was honestly most of the time. Their impulses were so high that they could do whatever they wanted to satisfy their carnal desires, and that usually turned out to be very dangerous not only to the women chased by them, but also to the farmers, the crops, the furnitures, basically anything that stood in their path. The first time we heard about satyrs in history was in the Catalog of Women, a piece from an epic poem attributed to the Greek poet Hesiod. Hesiod mentioned that satyrs were created at the same time as nymphs and curities. He also mentioned that these fertility spirits were mischievous pranksters and troublemakers with an immense sexual appetite that loved to interfere and mess around with people. Eventually, around the 5th century before the Common Era, satyrs became very popular in Greek plays. Actors used to dress like satyrs and served as a chorus in most plays performed in ancient Greek festivals, such as a festival dedicated to Dionysus. These men dressed as satyrs usually served as the narrators and the comic reliefs in these plays and tried to make the spectators laugh by mimicking the creature's exaggerated animalistic behavior and sexual drive. Satyrs appeared here and there in classical mythology. One of the most popular myths has to do with the one known as Marcias. There are two major myths about this character in Greek mythology. We're only talking about one of them today, reserving the other one for another video. Marcias was known as an exceptional musician. For some, he was considered as the founder of the Aulos, an ancient wind instrument very popular during festivals. It was said that the goddess Athena, after playing the instrument, noticed how ugly she looked like with her cheeks puffed up while she was blowing in the Aulos. She then threw away the instrument and cursing anyone that found it to die in a horrible way. Unfortunately for Marcias, he was the one who found it, and he was exceptionally good at it. His music was mesmerizing and captivated everyone who listened to it. Eventually, the poor Marcias would die in a horrible way after challenging the god Apollo. But as I said earlier, we'll talk about this myth in another video. In the Middle Ages, satyrs, like most mythical creatures coming from Greek mythology, were portrayed in a negative way by Christian writers. They were seen as evil and mischievous beings whose sole purpose was to stray humans away from a righteous path to lead them into a life of sin. The Latin priest Saint Jerome described satyrs as being the symbol of the devil, mostly due to their lustful and predatory nature. Nowadays, satyrs are mostly common in anything related to the fantasy genre. They are included in movies such as Narnia with Mr. Tomnus or in Hercules, where the young hero's trainer was an old satyr known as Phil. They're also present in literature, most notably in the Percy Jackson series with the satyr Grover Underwood. Other than that, they're present in video games, comics, board games, card games, and much more. This concludes today's video. Thanks everyone for watching and hopefully you enjoyed today's content. If you wish to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and share the video to put it out there. Now then, thanks again for all of you who've been following me for such a long time, and see you all very soon for a new video.